Welcome to my What the Clock uh, talk about Linux clock uh, subsystem internals. First of all, who am I? So, uh, I worked in the Linux and embedded uh, firmware field for the last uh, 14 years. Uh, for my previous uh, job, I was the principal engineer for porting Linux on the custom ARM SOCs. And uh, I worked with SOC design team, so I was a software, so software guy with the hardware guys. For the last five years, I'm uh, in general at Bay Libre in South of France. And uh, one of my um, upstream tasks is to write support for AMLogic uh, SOCs in Linux and U-Boot. In this task, I was contributing for the clock driver, for the AMLogic clock driver for the last three years and a half. So what's the clock? First, uh, I will speak about how the hardware handles the clock. So I'm not a hardware guy or electron, electron, electronical engineer guy, so it may be incorrect or partially correct, but it's only here to have the keywords and to understand the underlying hardware constraints and designs to understand how the clock framework has been designed in Linux. So, hardware. What is a clock? Uh, a clock in hardware is only a signal. Uh, a signal can be uh, 0, 1, okay? So, a clock is a continuous single signal uh, with um, two edge, rising, falling, and between the edge you, you can you have a width between the same edge we have a period and when the period repeats you have a frequency um, this is a clock so normally it's stable you should have the same period of the time the same width and the same uh, frequency uh, the clock can have a duty cycle so you not, not always have the same length between the width at 1 and the width at 0 and uh, the time to from, from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 is not always instantaneous. You, are, you have a time to call setup before and a time called hold after to, to make me sure the clock is stable after and before these times. When you have multiple clocks or when you, you take a clock and you derive it in multiple clocks, you can have different phases. We, we use we, we define phases in degrees okay and clock is not so each clock are not either and you can have jitter and jitter is when uh, you don't you slightly have a, a change in width and, and period and this can be really harmful for the stability of the system so yeah, you expect a perfect clock, like you see on a logic analyzer, analyzer. but yeah, the reality is not the same uh, on, an, on a scope. You see, you see what effectively goes on the line, and often it's not really um, that beautiful. So, the structure, the clock, a clock in the system is the heartbeat of the system, okay? Everything is synchronous to a clock, okay? And uh, often, uh, the system takes a source of clock, an external clock, like an oscillator or a crystal, and generates, like we call a tree, a clock tree. Uh, it, it will divide, multiply, a gate, or whatever the clock, to give each function of the, to each function of the SOC, a particular clock with a specific phase, a specific duty cycle, and so on. So, in order to generate and provide the clock in the system, you have multiple components. So, first you have exter an external clock, uh, we, we, call, we call it a crystal, okay? You have external oscillators, but you also have internal oscillators in SOCs often used for very low uh, low clocks, like the 42 kilo kilohertz clock. In the SOCs, you have PLLs, dividers, gates, muxes, and clock synchronization, when you have multiple clocks on, from dip, different sources to synchronize them. 
So what is a PLL? So a PLL is used to take a clock in entry and generate a different clock in output. Okay, so it's really a complex uh, system. It's mainly used to take, for example, a 24 megahertz uh, output clock and generate a multi gigahertz internal clock to clock the full system. So if you're interested, you can go in Wikipedia to see all the electronical and uh, physical um, theory on the PLL. It's really complex. Okay, I won't go in detail in there. So here is the parallel. Often the parallel, you can you will have a multiplier and a divider uh, component to generate uh, a clock, and you often have a pre divider and a post divider uh, before and after the PLL. A gate, a gate. There's a lot of gates in the system in general because you don't want all the system to be clocked at the same time so you want to disable some components of the system some functions so you put clock gates in front of the function so the clock doesn't go anymore to the function but you can't cut the clock when you want so we they use the hardware engineers use latches to actually clock stop the clock after a period or between two periods for example so you also have uh, mixes. Mixes is you can have multiple clocks, sources for a function. So hardware engineers have multiple choices for mixes. You can have really simple mixes, so you take the clock. So when you change the mix, it's directly changed to the, the clock. So you can change in the middle of the uh, between two periods. So it will uh, it will uh, put a glitch. Or you can really have complex digital glitch free metric mixes like the, this one which are uh, more expensive in other hardware for very sensitive uh, functions so this is a, a sort of a example of a, a, a soc with you, you see uh, next uh, an external crystal oscillator which come in the the package which goes in a gate because you for example in the you, you could cut the, the external crystal accelerator for the shutdown system or for reset for example uh, this crystal accelerator can go into multiple PLLs not only one the output of the PLL for example can go to the bus clock and this bus clock can go to each fun functions internal or external functions with a gate before them and for example the same PLL clock that is not divided for them can go to the DDR controller and clock the memory. For complex functions, for fast functions like HDMI, MMC, and so on, you could have a separate PLL uh, that use the same source clock, which could generate a much higher clock for HDMI uh, 4K, for example. And this could go on a MUX. And the, the, this function could select between the best clock, the first panel, or the second panel for the third clock. It's really, really classic uh, design. So in the Linux world, we used to call the the the, the group mux divider and gate as a composite clock, because in uh, systems. You see a lot of uh, of these uh, groups of clock bef before functions or and so on. So let's see in software how and how it was implemented. So historically, uh, Linux driver handled the clocks by themselves. So for example, they have uh, they had a UR driver or, or CPU frac. They had hard coded. In the driver, oh, this is the device can do, uh, for example, uh, 100 kilohertz for uh, EI 2 c or so on, and they, they had to uh, generate, calculate the clock locally with inside the divider or the mux, knowing the input for this one, one. but uh, each driver managed it on its side. You couldn't really um, link a source clock with a, a function. Uh, it was really hard to to port it over multiple SOC in the same family. You could have different uh, PLL, uh, PLL 
different uh, bus clocks and so on. So it was very complex to handle at the end. So uh, RMK uh, started, uh, all this started in uh, to, to, to K4 with the integrator, the ARM uh, integrator family in really, really basic uh, clock uh, code, which was only uh, here to set uh, the PLL. So we call it VCO. VCO is the, is the core, the core of the PLL. So the, uh, the VCO is what generates the clock. And the PLL globally is the group with the pre-divider, the post-divider and so on, the filters and so on. So this was really designed for one function to set the PLL of the system. So here we call VCO the multiple PLLs of the system. It was really basic at the time and only for one, one architecture. So two years later, finally it was moved to, uh, to a common clock.h. Uh, it was, it managed to handle the basic function of the clock. So you want to enable the clock for gate, for example, or PLLs. Uh, get the rate, actual rate, uh, uh, calculate if the rate was achievable, set rate, and change the parent of, of, the, of the clock for a mix, and get the, the possible, the actual parent. Okay. So, but uh, it was still uh, not uh, managed in a common fashion, so every uh, machine code implemented then all their own clock uh, code. Uh, for example, uh, the integrator uh, did uh, an implementation which was basic. OMAP did an implementation. And uh, each platform drivers used them at some point. Uh, it was uh, because the implementation was not uh, the same for each, the usage was not the same at all. Uh, for example, uh, you see the Mac integrator, clock.c, it was really basic. You, it was only, they kept the VCO setup uh, from, uh, from the early code and only added uh, dumb functions for enable, disable, and set mods and so on. And, um, uh, for, for example, OMAP did a complete implementation. You could uh, change parent, you could set PLL, the, the, the clock uh, set rate will uh, go through the tree, the tree to set the rate to the parents and so on. So they did a great job and it was not enough. So they added some uh, custom functions so like, like clock use, union use, use count, which was needed for, for the use case, which was missing for, from the initial clock dot h. So there were a clash because, uh, for example, it was okay for uh, platform only drivers, so for so OMAP only, for ARM only, but often you will, will have uh, generic IPs that that need a clock, a clock input, uh, so they could set rate, change the parent, and since uh, the the implementation was different for each platform. Uh, you need some uh, different implementation and different behavior, so you have some if def and so on. And worst of all, you have different uh, duplication of clock logic. For example, all the rate calculation, progression, and uh, the parenting system was made for OMAP, but not for other, um, they differently, or maybe badly. For example, all the clock rounding was maybe done correctly for OMAP and not for the other platform. So, it was not right. And for example, yeah, uh, I'm part of the ones who added a, a fake clock to satisfy a driver, which is uh, not something uh, I want to speak about. So, to to solve the, this inconsistency, okay, uh, Mike Turquette, who worked from for TI at the time, uh, introduced the clock, the common clock framework, okay. So it was like uh, like five years later. So for five years, uh, it was they handled this uh, stuff. But at one point, it was not uh, manageable. So it was 
the result was the consolidation of many different strict clock definitions and different framework implementations. And the goal is an implementation of the well-known clock API. Okay, so they kept the clock.h API, which was okay-ish, okay, but they took all the different implementation and made a common one with all the good practices and all and the good algorithm. So the idea of the common clock framework is it's not a, a standalone framework like other stuff like HCI, uh, PCI, and so on, where it was really around the driver for all device. No. Here it's the real framework. It's it's a library. So drivers are responsible for populating the framework with a clock key topology, okay? And plugging the ops, the, the, the callbacks physically programming the hardware. So when a driver puts the clocks to the framework, it stays in common. So you, you can group you can uh, link clocks from one driver to another driver. It is the goal of the common clock framework. So with the library, you need to provide some clock ops. It's the base of the clock control drivers. So for each clock of your system, you will provide some, not all of them, some of the callbacks. Uh, for, example, for example, prepare and prepare a mandatory, for example, um, init is mandatory, but not all clocks can uh, handle all the functions. For example, only gates can uh, enable disable, and so on. So, uh, for example, divide, for dividers, you will need a recall count, a recall rate, a round rate, set rate, for mix set parent, get parent. For PLL, you need almost everything except the parenting. And you you can have wild clocks, for example, uh, which needs all the, call, all, all the calls, for example. Or you can have a uh, uh, really basic clock, so fixed clocks, with only one callback, uh, get rate, for example. So when you give all your clocks with the list, uh, list of the parents, the framework will build a clock tree. Uh, we, it will link it will link the parent of each clock for, with the name of the clock to provide to generate a tree. Uh, they will, it will cache the current parent. It will calculate in the tree a write per clock. It will, it will cache the clock, the clock by working the tree by reading the registers and by calling get rate for each clock. If the get rate if it's not implemented, it takes the clock of the parent, for example. And you will have a complete tree of clock rates. And uh, when you you want to change the clock, you do set rate for example, or get round clock. Uh, it will uh, work the tree recursively to match the request by reparenting, for example, if possible. If asked, you have flags. You say you can reparent or you cannot reparent, for example. And uh, you also have enable disable for, for example, if you do disable for a clock which doesn't have uh, the enable uh, disable uh, calls, it will propagate to all the parents. Uh, it will not disable all the clocks there because it will it, it has some counters, some enables and disable counters. For for example, for, you you won't uh, cut the main gate. Because uh, all the enable, uh, the previous enable will, will also propagate to all the clocks up to the root clock. So the, the enable count will only decrease by one if you do, do a disable. So since uh, the beginning, it has quite evolved over the time. So you have clock notifier, for example, you can, you can be notified when uh, uh, on multiple events like clock change, parent change, pre clock change, or pre parent change, so you can uh, act on the system. For example, if you would, we use use the clock unifier uh, on M logic 
to do DVFS, where uh, the clock path of the CPU is quite complex. So you need to uh, to um, when you change the clock rate on one on one path, uh, you are notified before changing, so you can switch to a safe clock until the uh, clock remark did the change on the on one part of the tree, and afterwards you are notified the post change, and you can put back to the change uh, um, tree. Um, you have device tree support, which is a big thing. Uh, because before the device tree, it was uh, quite complex to use. Uh, they added clock accuracy support. It's not really used. Uh, you have you can specify your accuracy in part per billion, and the accuracy will propagate to the to the uh, subclocks, for example. You have clock phase. You can uh, specify, change, and read the clock phase for a clock in degrees. You have clock duty cycle in a numerator denumerator ratio. Uh, there is clock exclusivity for a consumer because uh, until this was merged, when a device a device set a clock, for example, in a tree that use a PLL, for example, so, uh, when the set rate of, of a, like say a SPI driver set a clock that change a PLL value, if another consumer use the same path, for example, uh, the set rate of another consumer would change the PLL that changed the clock of the SPI, so it was wrong. So now you can tell the clock framework, okay, my clock, I want to keep this right, I am exclusive on all the tree of this clock, over up to the root uh, clock. So you cannot change any clock on the tree. So if another clock wants to use set a rate, it will either keep one of the clock in the tree the same rate, or use an error rate, or fail. And you can set rate invariant with a range, a min, and a max. So, pre before device tree, uh, so the mapping with, uh, between a device and a clock was fixed. Uh, which was uh, complex to write. Honestly, when uh, before DT, when you needed to uh, to to set up all the devices and their relationship and so on in C. It was really a, a complex and long task, honestly. So, and the Mac code uh, is linked to the device and clock statically. So it was, there was nothing dynamic or you could have dynamic, it, it was in code. So we need to rebuild the kernel to change. So it was static. And, um, each clock was associated to the device structure. So you could, you could, could have a number of clocks for each device structure. So, but what he was really missing is how to link a clock output of a controller, for example, and a clock input of a consumer out of the clock controller and driver. There is no simple way to, uh, to, uh, to link, for example, a SPI controller and a SPI device. Okay? There was no simple way for that. So often it was not described at all, and it was described differently. So device tree provides a way to link a clock output to your clock input. Whatever the source of the clock, whatever the consumer of the clock. Okay? Uh, a producer can be a device. And a consumer can be a, a controller, a clock controller. It can be uh, either way. So you, you can link clocks between clock controllers, between devices, between device and clock controllers in either way. Before that, it was nearly impossible or very complex to do. So with device tree, you can declare multiple clock providers. You can have multiple clock controllers in the system. Can declare simple clocks, uh, clocks provided by devices, and special clocks generated by special devices like PWM clocks. You can link clocks between devices, and you can uh, set the constraints in device tree for parenting and write between clocks, for example. So this is an example in the 
euh, Clock Bindings, par exemple. Like you see uh, the system is here. You have an oscillator going in the system. This oscillator clock can go either in the UART directly, in the PL, and the UART can take an input, take an input to clocks. The output of the PL is the, and the oscillator input. So this little diagram is how you express it in the uh, in device tree. And everything is generic. When you set up all the, the, the specific uh, data of the clock in the S3, and you link them with, like you see, uh, classic the S3. Uh. Okay. So, still, The clock control implementation is still very heter heterogeneous. Uh, you have a very different way to write to write a controller because uh, in the last eight years, uh, each uh, uh, the maintainers uh, introduced new way to declare a clock and so on. So you will see uh, every uh, clock controller driver is quite different. Um, And as, uh, I, uh, a lot use uh, these composite clocks and so on because uh, initially they thought the, the clock framework was not uh, smart enough to handle the link between the, between the component of the, of, um, of a composite clock which is false because, uh, because uh, for example for the MLG controller What uh, was did by uh, Mac Turquette, he, he did the initial uh, controller, is we declare every node of the tree. Every node. Every node with its particularity. So if, if there is a gate, we declare it. If there is a DVD, we declare it. And you have flags, you can tell it's read only, you can tell it's fixed, you can. But you need to declare everything. And then if you declare absolutely everything, The clock framework will, will handle it correctly and we work the tree and set the rate parenting correctly. And it works actually. It's pretty, pretty good. And if you have an issue, you simply add a flag to a clock to tell oh, this clock uh, sh should not uh, reparent it, for example, and so on. So I think the MLG clock controller wasn't the most modern, as the most simpler. There is absolutely no logic. Amlogic specific logic in it. We simply declare all the clocks. We handle the Amlogic specific clocks, but there is no logic in the controller driver itself. We simply declare all the clocks. Uh, uh, the, there is logic for the one logic is, is is for the CPU DVFS because uh, you need to respect the SOC designers clock path. Uh, because the CPU, uh, you need to, to keep, uh, you have the right frequencies and use the right path for the CPU because you, you can have really high frequencies like 2 GHz and so on. So one of the limitations of the clock tree, uh, the clock uh, framework is the tree walking, which is in recursive. So I know uh, Stephen Boyd would like to go a bit and uh, avoid it to be recursive, but uh, yeah. Worker start has started. There is an implementation, but the switch is quite big, so it might make some time to switch. Um, it doesn't hold, uh, handle some uh, now very important properties because in the old times you you only had a very slow frequencies for for SSC, or only the, the high frequencies for the CPU, and the whole system you only had. Uh, low frequencies like uh, multiples of 100 megahertz. Now you have uh, clocks that uh, provide the HDMI output of very fast uh, buses. And when you go high, when you ask high gigahertz uh, clocks, you have complex PLLs with complex settings and filters, and you have jitter. And you have, uh, depending on the path, depending on the divider values, on the multiple value, And the, the, you have different jitter capability, and this is not handled at all. The clock framework doesn't know which path is more. So, 
this uh, was uh, there is a theory to solve this to actually had uh, tell uh, okay this path this clock path you want to handle it I will handle it in a specific function for example so it's still in discussion there is no uh, clear way to handle it right now uh, on now the new ARM systems or the new so ARM bay with systems ARM V8 systems uh, you have a part of the system which is handled by the firmware uh, in the SCPI or uh, SCMI or whatever and uh, this firmware uh, or this TFI CF firmware needs some clocks for example and there is a really no simple way to say okay this firmware use this clock for uh, an internal device so how to tell the NDT for example this is you cannot so there is no properly way to describe uh, today we we set the clock as uh, critical for example in the controller but it's not the right way to do there is no handoff mechanism from firmware to device for example uh, uh, for dvfs you could have your firmware that handles the dvfs and then when linux is fully booted you can say okay now there is no more the firmware that handles it and it's me but in the meantime be be between the the firmware boot and when the the, the handoff could be like, like the when the module is loaded you could have the clock, clock framework that cuts all the clock or the gate and cuts it clock for example or change the rate so there is no simple mechanism to do that and like i said there is no dynamic clock path clock, clock path prioritization there is no way to prioritize the clock path for HDMI. For example, when you, when you have a HDMI 2.0 uh, for 4K, you need to provide up to uh, 6 uh, gigahertz to the 5, for example. So you need to, clear, to, to select your clock path, uh, how the clock designer designed it. You can take any random path to the system to generate this, uh, this value. Or any panel, for example. Okay, so this is all. If you have questions, uh, don't hesitate.